Et depuis mon arrivée en France, Sa Majesté le Roi m'a offert l'hospitalité en ces lieux. Today we are going to travel through 800 years of history to the château of Clos Lucet, which is Leonardo da Vinci's final resting place in France. It is located in the city of Amboise, about two hours south of Paris. And so this is the castle where the Italian master passed away in 1519 after a life full of talent and genius, as we all know. We know his famous paintings like the Mona Lisa, but he was also a genius scientist and architect who experimented, tested and invented up to the end of his life. And many of his inventions are actually displayed in the Clos Lucet, either as a mini scale or prototype in the house and in the gardens. It is a wonderful place to visit. Fortunately for us, on that day, it was kind of cold and rainy, but despite the rain and the temperature, we had a blast. The castle is beautiful and the garden spectacular. So the domain of the Clos Lucet was built in the Middle Age. It dates way back. 1200, 1400, and initially belonged to a local noble and rich family. Then it went to the local abbey, so the clergy, and then later to the kings. And it's actually the king, Francis I, at the time, who invited the Italian master in 1516 as a guest to France, to this beautiful uh, domain, as he was just passionate for Da Vinci's talent. He named him the premier painter and engineer and architect of the king. Look at that title. We don't get those titles nowadays anymore, right? So he offered him this castle and this domain for his enjoyment during his stay in France, as it was located only a few meters away from the king's Chateau d'Amboise, which was one of the many royal castles in that area. And the say is that there was a secret passage that linked this uh, castle here, the Da Vinci's uh, place, to the king's castle, the main castle of Amboise, just uh, for the two men to get together on a daily basis if the king wanted to. So he gave Da Vinci this castle, but not just a castle, he also gave him a stipend or a pension for his enjoyment. He wanted to keep the Italian genius happy in France and close by. And that was just for the king's enjoyment. The king wanted to have that genius mind next door pretty much so that he could uh, have a conversation with him, get his ideas. And that was it. He wanted to have him close by. So Da Vinci spent the last three years of his life in um, Amboise at the Clos Lucet, working on several projects for the King of France, surrounded by the many students. So when you visit the castle, you go through the house, see the main rooms, including uh, Da Vinci's uh, bedroom where he passed away, uh, overlooking with the window overlooking towards the main castle of Amboise where the king was. So you see the kitchen and also his working area, his kind of science lab or painting room where he worked either on painting, on writing, on testing, doing his own experiment. You have a lot of explanations throughout the house to get to know the master more and then you go to um, a separate uh, room kind of on the, not underground but basement where you see some of his experiments some prototypes smaller scale experiments and inventions i had no idea how much he invented until i visited this house it is spectacular and not just the bridges and the buildings it's also a lot of war machines he developed and you can see the same inventions or some others in the garden bigger scale and you can actually test them. So after the house, we're going to go through the garden and look at all these experiments in another video. So stay tuned and make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up as well.
Now for the coming minute or so, make sure you have the subtitles enabled on your YouTube video as it is in French. So you want to have the auto translate on. Cardinal Louis Tarakou, tout l'honneur est pour moi votre éminence. Vous savez que je voyage à travers l'Europe dans l'espoir que nos puissants alliés nous aideront à retrouver le trône du royaume de Naples dont ma famille a été injustement spoliée. J'ai déjà rencontré Charles de Habsbourg en Allemagne, François Ier à Rouen, et votre illustre renommée m'a attiré jusqu'à votre résidence. Vous m'envoyez très heureux, votre excellence. Depuis mon arrivée en France, Sa Majesté le Roi m'a offert l'hospitalité en ces lieux. <rire> Ici, je peux jouir de la tranquillité. De rester à l'écart des troubles du duché de Milan. Votre éminence comprend tout. En ce palazzo del clos, j'ai enfin le privilège de pouvoir consacrer mes jours et mes nuits à l'étude et à certaines recherches. Je vois que vous avez réuni moult notes et écrits, dessins de nature et de mécanique de toutes sortes. Voyez cette suite de dessins sur le déluge, votre seigneurie. Je m'intéresse beaucoup au mouvement de l'eau qui érode les montagnes et comble les vallées. Si elle en avait le pouvoir, elle réduirait notre terre à l'état d'une sphère parfaite. Ces milliers de pages qui regroupent toutes vos connaissances, celles d'un esprit hors du commun. Mais ne devriez-vous pas les faire imprimer Je songe sérieusement à rassembler toutes mes notes manuscrites en effet. Cela permettrait d'ordonner mes propos et de présenter mes dessins. Mon disciple Francesco Melzi a quelques idées à ce sujet. So we are visiting Da Vinci's house under the rain <laughs> with 60 degrees. It is cold and rainy, but it's beautiful inside. So let me show you the garden here, his private garden. So these are some grapes. I'm not sure they're doing that great this year, but you've got grapes everywhere anyway in the area. So I'm not too sure what they're growing here. Uh, obviously it's no longer Da Vinci's garden, <laughs> it's the museum's garden, but Quite a bit everywhere. Oui. It's beautiful, I just wish it was not raining. Beautiful, beautiful place. Oh, it's okay. It can take a tiny bit of rain. Yeah, it is raining. <laughs> that is his bridge. Body puddle. Oh, vous avez des explications en anglais si vous voulez les filles. Attendez. Oh, ben bah, il marche pas. Ok. Je sais pas ce que c'est. Hein. C'est un peu C'est là, encore d'eau. Pourquoi il y a un canard pour midi là Oh, c'est la nébule. Euh... Un canard pour midi. Ah oui, il y a un petit canard. Oh mais il est heureux le canard, lui il aime la pluie. Hein? Hein? At least somebody is happy under the rain over there. Ah, ah et on a un autre pont da Vinci. Oh, 
wave propagation. Huh. Yeah. Circle those ripples on the water. J'arrive J'arrive Qu'est-ce qu'il y a à l'étage Ok, mais je vais monter. As you can see, there's plenty of water with some uh, falls, uh, little lakes. So when you have so much water, it means a lot of bridges to go around that domain. And they are all different bridges and all were designed by Da Vinci at the time. So it's extremely interesting to just go around, look at the designs, the different architecture and understand how it was made. So you got the different explanations some of them are really pretty and impressive. It's hard to conceive uh, it was designed so long ago. Very, very neat visit. And there is a lot more to come when you look at the prototypes. This is just some of it looking at the architectures and the bridges. <laughs>